Hey guys, Harsh here, back with video. So today in this video, I am going to show you how you can make this awesome ESP32 based remote control for your robotics projects and RC cars. So let me just give you a short overview of how this is made. So first of all, we have our battery. This will provide a 5 volt supply with this voltage regulator, powers the ESP32 and all the buttons and the potentiometer which is this joystick over here and an encoder over here as you can see it is all mounted on a zero pcb and that is because i have soldered all the wires directly to the different endpoints so this is going to be a very fun project and at the end of the video i will show you one of my test vehicles and test it out so without wasting time let's get started so starting off with these tiny push buttons i am going to control the motion of the vehicle or whatever you like in your particular case so as you can see I have installed these three buttons on a zero PCB which is just a simple PCB over here with some solar points nothing too special and the fourth button will go just like over here. So we have a forward motion, backward motion, right and left. And if you don't know about the push button let me just explain it to you mostly or I think in all the cases if you look at the push button you can see we have two legs poking out of this side and two legs on the opposite side so basically these two poles are connected together and these two poles are connected together and when we push the button all the four poles are connected together just look at like this the pins closer to each other do not connect until the button is pressed so let me just uh, put it in its place and then we'll move on from here now it is critical to note that you install all the buttons in the same orientation and as you can see i have done exactly that that way when you flip the board around you won't be able to mistake the prongs and have to go back and forth again with the board to check the connection so now what we can do is just solder them in place but right now i'm not going to do that i'm just going to put all the components in the right position and then i'm going to solder them next up is our joystick and this is a simple two axis joysticks so by this motion we'll control the x axis and this motion will control the y axis i believe this one also has a switch there as you can see so if you press the joystick down you can hear the clicking sound and this is just the same switch as these push buttons so nothing too special about it but you will need to add a register for this switch as well as these other switch as well but i think that we have a very convenient spot for it right over here as you can see the r5 slot so for this i think the perfect place will be this position over here or the other way around so that the wires can go inside i will need to drill a hole over here so that the wires can go through next up i'm going to use a rotary encoder so as you can see i have different types of components to attach to my esp32 so we have a rotary encoder a potentiometer this is technically a potentiometer and then we have buttons so this actually pretty nice as you can see how we can connect different type of component and transmit them over the esp now protocol so this one also has a button as you can see if we push the stick down you can hear the clicking sound this will also go in a certain orientation i have not figured that out yet but i will surely do that or you can just uh, simply take off these pins solder them downwards and put them directly through the zero pcb but to do that you will need a high power soldering iron to remove all these solder pads and then put the pins in reverse so that is a pretty big hassle to do so i will just uh, prefer not to do that so this will control the speed of our vehicle and as you know the buttons are only in zero or one and we are not using the joystick to control the vehicle movement we will be using it for servos or something like that so this way we can set the speed between minimum maximum which is in if you are using a L29 motor driver, the dual edge bridge one, it will be ranging from 0 to 255, 0 being the minimum in which the motor wouldn't even budge to move and the 255 being the maximum. So I am guessing the orientation just like this would be perfect and for this one I think it will go just like this. Then on the left side we will put our ESP32, I will need to use some female header pins to solder that so that I can remove the ESP32 easily for my next project maybe put everything a bit closer and then finally add a switch somewhere here so that we can turn on or off this whole system so now let's solder these all components together and see how we can wire it So this is sort of final look that the control will look like and as you can see I have some holes over here for the wires to pass through and underneath that everything is soldered. So right now what we have to do is attach the power supply and I am going to use two 18650 batteries and these are absolutely huge batteries hence the huge case. 
it will go on i think just on the front for now i am not really going for the looks right now they combined will provide a voltage of 7.4 volts but for the esp32 at full charge that will be a huge amount of voltage so i am going to use a 5 volt voltage regulator this is a simple lm7805 voltage regulator so this will regulate that voltage down to 5 volts only so that we can feed it to the v in pin which is right over here on the top left corner as you can see and this case also has a switch over here so i don't need to install a secondary switch for it as well that's pretty nice so now let's just quickly solder them onto the place So here is the final look for the controller and as you can see I have soldered on an external antenna to the ESP32 with a SMA connector on one end. So we'll just connect this antenna so that we can get a further range with this ESP32 but this is not necessary portion so just don't confuse it as a necessary step. The normal antenna on the ESP32 will just work fine. Now what we have to do is connect the analog joystick, the encoder and these buttons to the ESP32. So for that I'll be using these jumper wires over here which I have cut out so as you can see one end is the female end which will go on these pins over here and then they will go through this hole and from underneath there we can then solder on to each individual pin same with the switches but these will require uh, some sort of wire because this wire won't make it happen so first we need to connect the registers just like we do with the normal sort of buttons do check that on how to connect the buttons with the esp basically it is just a simple case of getting a power line to the button and the other end of the button one will go to the input pin whichever you like and the same pin will be connected to a 10 kilo ohm resistor and going to the ground so pretty basic connection for the buttons there as well so now let's quickly connect them all pass them through the hole and then solder them onto the place So now that the wires are through now we can finally solder them onto the pins right over here and what I'm going to do is just give you a vague idea on how I'm going to connect it and I will provide the circuit diagram and all that stuff in the description below so that way you will be able to understand it clearly. So this joystick as you know have two inputs that is ground and 5 volts so for the ground I have the yellow wire and for the plus 5 volts I have the red wire but as you know the ESP32 operates on 3.3 volts so we will just connect it to the 3.3 volt supply and nothing much will change there now as for the X and Y axis these are the two analog inputs we will we'll be using so one can connect to any of the GPIO pins that you have on the ESP32 same with the encoder here yellow is the ground red is the positive supply and these two are I think what it's called so clock and data I believe these are called so they will be connected to any of the GPIO pins on the ESP32 for this however what I'm going to do is just connect the VRX pin to I think D34 which is which will translate to GPIO pin 34 VRY to GPIO pin 13 which is right over here now why so far apart I am just assuming that these two are on different analog to digital converter channels and if I put two analog inputs on the same channel it gets mixed up a bit so that's why I am using two different channels over here and that's why the pins are so far apart so 13 and 34 will be our analog inputs for the joystick then clock and data can be any of the pins so right next to them I can put it and then four inputs for these switches as well.
so here is the full and final form for this controller now let me just explain you what i have done over here so that you don't have to be confused at all and look at the circuit diagram even so first up we have our power supply to 18650 battery total providing 7.4 volts now that is too much for this esp32 so it goes to a 5 volt regulator and that converts the 7.4 volts to 5 volts and that directly goes into the v in which is voltage input and ground pin at the back here as you can see these two blue wires now talking about the joystick we have the x-axis y-axis and a button so as you can see there are a total of five pins ground and plus five volts these are directly connected to 3.3 volts and ground now it says here five volts but you can use 3.3 volts as this whole board operates on 3.3 volts so that won't be an issue and simply connect the ground to the ground now the vrx and vry pin like if we just flip the board around then you can see are connected over here so gpio pin number 34 and gpio pin number 33 so these are the inputs for our vrx and vry as for the switch you can see it is written as sw it is an active low switch that means that once the switch is pressed then the connection breaks and if we don't press the switch then the connection is closed so just a reverse of these buttons over here so that one goes to pin number 5 or GPR pin number 5 or on the board you can see D5 over here now comes the encoder as you can see it has also two ports ground and positive connected to the 3.3 volt supply over here then the clock and the data pin are connected to pin number d12 and d14 right here as you can see and it doesn't really matter which pin you connect to which over here because if you just want to reverse the direction of increment and decrement for example let's say if you turn the encoder clockwise then the value will increase and if you turn it clockwise then the value will decrease and if you swap these two around then when you turn the knob clockwise the value will decrease so just like a potentiometer but in a digital way now come these buttons so if I were to flip it around and show you what I have done over here, first I have taken the 3.3 volts positive and come all the way and over here and connect it to all the four buttons. Then their second terminal is gone from here to over here and as you can see from here one end goes to the register and the other end goes to the GPI input which is right over here. So basically consider this. The output from these button one is going to the gpio input and the other is going via register to the ground and this is just a basic way of how the buttons work in arduino and esp boards so now that we have done we can finally go ahead and program this code and also program our receiver so that we can perform some action so let's head over to our computer and program it okay so before we do anything on the ide or the esp32 First we need to make sure that our IDE is capable of programming the ESP32 board. So first of all what we have to do is and I am doing this old style because I am familiar with the old IDE and this is the new IDE as you can see. So what you have to do is just go to file and then click on preferences. This will open up this small window and at the bottom here you can see we have the additional boards manager URLs. So here you have to paste the additional URL for the ESP32. As you can see I have already pasted here that's why it is showing already. I will give this in the description box below so that you can also do that. And once that is done you can just go ahead and click on OK. Then what you have to do is just go to tools. Then go to the board section and click on boards manager. You will get this window on the left side or if you are using the old ID then a separate window will pop up. And here you have to search for ESP32. And here you can see we have the ESP32 by Espressive system. So this is the company that produces the ESP32 and it's provided by them. As you can see it is already installed on my computer. If it was not then I would get this type of button. So just install it then restart your IDE. Now your IDE is capable of sending data to the ESP32. So as you know the first code you see here is not what you think and this is actually for the receiver because first we need to find out the mac address of the receiving side so that we can send data to it just assume it like a phone number we would need a phone number to call someone so first we include the wi-fi reliability if it initializes it and then we will start the serial monitor and from the serial monitor we will print the mac address it is simple as that so let's select our board from this drop down menu go to select other boards and ports and here you have to search for esp32 dev kit module or whatever module you have so as you can see it is dev module right over here i will select that and then i will select the port which is com5 in my case it is the only port showing here and once both of them are selected just click on ok now our com port is selected now we can go ahead and upload the code 
and here you can see it is first compiling the sketch and once the sketch is compiled it will upload it to the board so now as you can see it is compiled now it is uploading the code and as you can see we have confirmation that the code is now uploaded so now what we have to do is open the serial monitor to do that head to the top right corner you can see over here we have two options serial plotter and serial monitor click on the serial monitor and first of all you won't see anything but the thing is that the code has already run even before we can open up the serial monitor so just press the reset button on the ESP32 and then it will show up the MAC address to you at the last here you can see here is our MAC address which is E8DB840C5830 just make sure that you don't get confused between zeros and O's because in a MAC address it's a hexadecimal address I think so you won't get letters higher than F copy this address and keep it safe with you because we will need this in our future code so here is our transmitter code that will upload on the transmitter that we just made and as you can see here we have to put the MAC address for the receiver so let's start with up top we have included three libraries which is the rotary encoder this will allow us to get the values of the rotary encoder you can get this library just by going to the sketch section and click on include library and then click on manage libraries on the side there just type rotary encoder and here you can see the library over here just click on install and it will install directly to your IDE and then you can use it then we included our ESP now library this library will automatically install when you download the ESP32 boards so you don't need to add it additionally same with the Wi-Fi library now here is the main portion that you may need to modify for your particular case which is the pins and the amount of inputs that you require so as you can see VRX VRY pin number 33 and 34 our switch is connected to pin number 5 the clock and data pin for the encoder are 12 and 14 and speaking of buttons as you can see they are all spread around so 32 27 26 and 35 are the pins for the forward reverse left and right motion now here as you can see we create an instance for the encoder so we define it by the clock pin and the data pin and this is just how the library works I have not much idea about it so I will just leave it at that then here we have defined the structure of data that we actually need to send x and y are our potentiometer values ranging from 0 to 4000 something like that and then these values switch front back left and right are all values either 0 or 1 so 0 means do nothing 1 means do something and then here is our speed value that will be determined by the encoder so this value if you are using a motor driver l 29 8 and dual H bridge motor driver then the values will be in range from 0 to 255 now here are some basic steps that you need to follow on the ESP now I have commented the serial printer out because these are just for the debugging and I have already debugged this program so I don't need them anymore that's why I commented that out now in the setup function we will begin our serial port at the 115200 baud rate then we'll define our Wi-Fi mode our ESP now initialization happens here and if it's not okay then it will print on the serial monitor that it is not okay here we have the callback function so that we know if the data is sent or not and some other stuff over here as well these are all for the initialization and the debugging of the ESP now protocol now here is our pin mode for our ESP32 board and as you can see every single pin over here is defined as input so it will take the values from the pins not send the values to the pins so this basically just means that now if you move to the loop function then you can see for the first line here we define the encoder stored the value in the speed function over here so then as I said before the analog stick has a active low switch so that's why we get reverse value and to reverse it again I have to use this code over here it will just reverse the value so if the digital read value of switch 1 is 1 then it will set at 0 and if it is 0 then it will be 1 and then here you can see we have analog reading the values of VRX and VRY and storing it to data X and data Y then we read the value of every single button that we have so forward reverse left and right goes to the corresponding values over here and this is only for debugging over here but you don't need to do that so let me just remove it but let me just tell you what it does so it will print every single data in a single line and move on to the next line and print it again that is the new data that we get so 
this is again just for debugging you don't actually need that why put so much stress on your esp32 and then here is our main function that will send the data now this does return a value of success or failure so it will be stored in results and if you want to check then you can check again if it is sending the data or it is not sending the data maybe remove this whole line we don't need this anymore so this is what the final code will look like and once again just select the right board and the com port and upload it to the board now at last here is the final code that we need to upload so this is for the receiver and this is basically the same code nothing much changed over here except for a few first of all we don't need the encoder library because we will be getting the data as speed which is an integer value over here the structure is same as the other code and this needs to be 100 percent identical to the structure that we have for the transmitter and here the things get a bit different rather than putting our code in the void loop function we will put our code in the void on data receive so whenever the esp32 receives the data it will follow a set of instructions and by the time it has done all the functions it will again receive some sort of function or data from the transmitter and then again this will code will run and as you can see over here i have just uploaded a simple code of printing all the values so let's just quickly upload this code to the board and see if it is working or not so now it has been uploaded to the receiver so let's just quickly open the serial monitor and as you can see we are now receiving the value so let me just try to move the joystick on the transmitter and you can see how the values are changing let me try pushing a few buttons so we'll see the values changing on them From this point on you will have to code in your own sort of stuff over here so that you can control your own robotics projects or whatever you like because there are literally hundreds and hundreds of things that you can do with this project. So now let me just show you a demo of what I have done and we will see from there. So currently out with my test vehicle and here is the remote. So let me just show you how it performs. So we'll press the forward button and as you can see the vehicle move forward same with backward left and right now if you want to change the speed we will just turn this encoder to the counterclockwise direction and as you can see now the speed is slowed sometimes the speed is so slow that the motors won't move so you have to map it accordingly so let me just try to increase a bit and see if it now works so yeah, as you can see this is good for when you are turning because when turning if you are doing it at full speed then that won't be enough for pointing in the right direction because it moves very fast so there it is guys that's how you create a esp32 controller for your robotics project such as that one over here so thanks for watching the video guys hopefully you like it and i will see you all in the next one